Hey everyone, and welcome back. We're diving deep into Ralph Waldo Emerson today. His essay, Compensation, to be exact. It's a good one. It really is. We're going to unpack some seriously deep stuff about balance and well, how everything connects. Yeah, even though Emerson wrote this back in the 1800s. Right, so long ago. He was grappling with some pretty big ideas that still resonate in our modern world. Totally. And those ideas, they were really at the heart of transcendentalism. Which, just to catch everyone up, was this movement that emphasized the good they saw, the inherent goodness in humanity. Okay. So they were the optimists of their time. You could say that. They believed in this beautiful interconnectedness of all things. Like we're all part of this grand cosmic web. Right. And it all kind of comes together in compensation. Emerson argues that there's this constant give and take, you know, woven into the very fabric of existence. He makes the case that for every loss, there's a gain. For every descent, an ascent. Kind of like a grand cosmic balancing act. I like that, a cosmic balancing act. Yeah. And he actually uses this super vivid analogy of a double entry ledger to get this point across. Right. It's such a powerful image, this idea that there's this giant cosmic spreadsheet and every action, every choice we make gets recorded. And just like in accounting, each entry, each action has a consequence. Exactly. It's like cause and effect on a universal scale. Okay. So hold on, because this isn't some kind of what goes around comes around kind of thing, is it? No. No, not at all. Emerson's talking about something much deeper here. It's not about some kind of simplistic karmic retribution. It's more about this principle of equilibrium that governs the universe, even if we can't always see how it all balances out. It's like those ripple effects. Sometimes you just can't predict how far those ripples are going to go. Exactly. Exactly. And that's what makes it so fascinating, right? This idea that everything is connected. And, you know, speaking of interconnectedness and this whole cosmic balancing act, Emerson doesn't shy away from some pretty bold stances, especially when it comes to the concept of success. Like, he directly challenges that traditional idea that if you're a good person in this life, you'll be rewarded in the afterlife. You know, that whole pie in the sky kind of thinking. He even says at one point, is it that they are to have leave to pray and praise? Why? That they can do now. It's like he's saying, why wait? Right. Like, why wait for some external reward system when true fulfillment, real joy comes from living in alignment with your values right here, right now? Okay, I love that. So he's flipping the script on this whole idea of compensation. He really is. For Emerson, true rewards, true compensation, it's not about chasing after wealth, status, you know, all that stuff we often associate with success. It's not about the material world at all, is it? No, not at all. It's like he's saying true wealth is something entirely different. Exactly. For Emerson, it's about self-reliance, integrity. It's about living in a way that just feels true to you, like you're honoring your own internal compass. And man, does that ever connect with his other famous essay, Self-Reliance. Mm -hmm. And talk about a powerful statement, trust thyself, every heart vibrates to that iron string. Right. Such a powerful line. But what does he really mean by trust thyself? Like, how do we actually do that? Well, for Emerson, self-reliance wasn't about becoming some lone wolf completely isolated. It wasn't about rejecting the world. It was about something much deeper. Okay, so more about looking inward, tuning into that inner voice. Yes. And then having the courage to act on what you hear, living by your own internal compass, even if it means going against the grain, even if society tells you you're wrong. Marching to the beat of your own drum. Exactly. And, you know, this idea of self-reliance, it actually ties into another key point that Emerson makes in compensation. He talks about how we often try to sidestep life's inherent limitations. There's this one passage where he says, life invests itself with inevitable conditions which the unwise seek to dodge. The conditions are in his soul. Oh, I love that line. It's like he's saying, you can try to outrun them, but those conditions, they're inescapable. They're part of who you are. Exactly. And, you know, when you really think about it, we all do this in different ways, right? We try to chase after the good stuff, joy, love, success, but we often forget those things can't exist without their opposites. Right. It's like trying to have sunshine 24-7. You need the darkness, too. Exactly. Emerson is suggesting those inherent tensions, those light and dark parts of life, the ups and downs, they're what make it all so rich and interesting. It's those contrasts that give life depth, make it feel real. And I think that's where we learn and grow the most. Absolutely. It's about embracing the totality of the human experience. Yeah. The good, the bad, the messy, the beautiful. Okay, so we've talked a lot about these big kind of abstract ideas, but mm. how does this all actually show up in our lives today? Yeah. You know, Emerson was writing in a totally different time. Do his ideas still hold up in our modern world? 
That's what's so amazing about Emerson. He was writing back in the 1800s, but his work feels strangely relevant even now. It's true. He could be writing today, and it would still resonate. Exactly. I mean, think about it. Our obsession with quick fixes, our constant desire for more, 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 our anxieties about fairness and equity, these are all things Emerson was grappling with way back in the 19th century. Wow. When you put it like that, it's like we're still making the same mistakes, still trying to find that cheat code to a good life. And Emerson is over here like, hold up. That's not how it works. There's no shortcut. There's no escaping this fundamental truth that everything is connected. You can't just pick and choose the good stuff without the bad. He's reminding us that we can't game the system. And maybe that's where we go wrong when we try to. When we try to avoid the hard stuff, bypass the messy parts. Oh, totally. Yeah. Like, we think we're outsmarting life, but really, we're just creating more suffering for ourselves. Because we're fighting against the natural order of things. Yes. And that resistance, that's where a lot of our pain comes from. When we try to cling so tightly to only the good, only the easy, only the pleasurable, we end up creating this disharmony within ourselves. Because life is a constant flow, right? It's like we're trying to swim upstream against a really strong current. That's such a great analogy. And this all reminds me of a really powerful passage in the essay. Emerson writes, the death of a dear friend, wife, brother, lover, which seemed nothing but privation, somewhat later assumes its just and believed proportion to the entering of new and had not been known to us before. It's this incredibly poignant reflection on grief. I mean, losing someone you love, that's got to be one of the hardest things we go through as humans. Absolutely. And there's that saying, grief is just love with nowhere to go. You can feel that sentiment woven into Emerson's words. It's like he understands the depth of that pain, but also sees the potential for growth and renewal on the other side of it. Yeah, he's acknowledging both the pain and the possibility. Loss, as difficult as it is, has this incredible power to open us up in ways we never could have imagined. It's like we go through something really tough and we think it's only going to break us, but then... But it can actually make us stronger. Yeah, more resilient. Mm -hmm. Like we've been forged in fire, you know? I love that, forged in fire. And you know, what's so powerful about Emerson's perspective is that he's not glossing over the pain. He's not saying, oh, just look on the bright side. He's acknowledging how much it hurts. Yeah, and then he's saying, but don't get stuck there. Let that pain transform you. Because that's where the real growth happens. It really is. It's in those moments where we're willing to face the darkness, to feel it fully, that we create space for something new to emerge. It's like those little cracks in our hearts, the ones that hurt so much. But that's where the light gets in, right? Exactly. It's so profound when you think about it. Emerson is really challenging us to rethink our whole relationship with pleasure and pain. Totally. He's saying, stop seeing them as separate things. They're interconnected, two sides of the same coin. And maybe that's a more honest way to look at life. It's not always sunshine and rainbows. Definitely not. And I think a lot of us get tripped up because we're always chasing after that perfect picture. When really it's the messy, imperfect parts that make it interesting. Absolutely. It's about embracing the wholeness of the human experience, the mm. highs, the lows, the in-betweens. That's what gives our lives meaning. And that brings us back to self-reliance, doesn't it? Like if we're always trying to avoid discomfort to outrun those tough emotions. Are we really ever facing ourselves? Right, or discovering what we're truly capable of. It's like we're limiting ourselves, holding ourselves back from our full potential. Because true growth requires us to lean into those challenges, to get a little uncomfortable. Exactly. And that's often where we discover our strength, our resilience, our compassion. There's this amazing alchemy that happens, I think, when we stop fighting against life's ups and downs. And we start seeing them as opportunities. Yes. Like, okay, what can I learn from this? How can I use this experience to grow? It's about transforming those experiences into something valuable. Gaining wisdom, becoming more compassionate, understanding ourselves and the world around us in a deeper way. Maybe that's the truest form of compensation, right? It's not about getting even or getting something back for what we lost. It's about recognizing the potential for growth that exists within every experience, even the ones that really test us. It's about finding the good and the bad the light and the darkness. Emerson leaves us with so much to think about. And before we wrap things up, I want to leave everyone with one final thought. Emerson talks about how the world globes itself in a drop of dew. It's just such a beautiful image of interconnectedness. It really is. So my question for everyone listening is, where do you see that interconnectedness in your own lives? Where have you experienced this balance of give and take, of loss and growth? 
Keep exploring that. Thanks for joining us for this deep dive into Emerson's compensation. It's been an incredible conversation. It really has. Thanks for having me. And thank you, our amazing listeners, for tuning in to this episode of The Deep Dive. Until next time, keep those questions coming. We'll see you next time.